Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 37 of our Tracksuit to the Top series here with Lewis FC in the Skybet League 1. Hopefully you guys are good. Today I've got for you guys a live comm in the Johnson Paint Trophy. The name of the trophy escaped my mind there for a second, but it is the second round. Uh, the reason we're doing this game is just because it kind of fits in nicely with the spaced out fixtures. But first let's talk about the game since the last episode, of which there's been a fair few. As you can see, largely wins. Two defeats to talk about, but we'll come on to them in due course. But we'll start off with, um, I guess, our Johnson Paint Trophy campaign and how we started it. And that was with a 3-2 win against South End. Definitely didn't make this one easy for us. We were 3-0 up, cruising away, and then they scored two goals in the last ten minutes. And from the 89th minute onwards, it was squeaky bum time. But we did hold on and get a good win there. The next result was against Blackpool. A team who have actually been kind of in League One for the last few years, really struggling. But you can see we beat them, and we beat them 4 0, which probably doesn't reflect the game. We were just incredibly clinical, as you can see Sinclair getting a hat trick here. And I'll tell you now, he has been a revelation over the last few games. I talked a bit, I think it would have been last episode, about how he wasn't performing. He really has stepped up. Anyway, our first defeat in this little run of results came away against a, a somewhat familiar team on my channel, Peterborough, uh, who are actually one of the teams right up there at the top of the table, but it was a disappointing result. Uh, to lose 3-1, you know, it perhaps felt a little unjust, but they were 3-0 up so early. We fought, fought bravely in the second half, but we couldn't get more than just the one, and that cost us. In the next game, uh, we beat Watford 5-0, an absolute romp here. We stomped them into the ground, and on the back of this result, uh, Watford sacked their manager. So, Watford really struggling in the league. At the start of the season, they were the promotion favourites, and you can see right now they're in 15th, uh, which is beyond disappointing, I guess. Anyway, the next result was one that I contemplated live coming, but I decided not to, and that was a 3-2 win against Blackburn. Um, they're championship opposition, and I probably should have live commed it upon reflection, but we have got a big tie now in our next game. But it was a good 3-2 win nevertheless. Um, they played a somewhat weakened side, but you can see that we still were well worth our lead looking at the stats. They had more of the ball, but we did a lot more with it, and it was a really good result. The next game was against Bradford. Probably the most boring game I've had in this save. I think there were two highlights. One was the kickoff in the first half, uh, and one was the goal. And then I guess there would have been one in the start of the second half. But it really was just a boring game. We lost 1-0. We deserved more. But Bradford took the one and only chance that fell their way. And they made it count. Anyway, on the back of this, two really good results. First one, a 2-0 win against Bolton. Another team who, of course, they're a championship team traditionally. But they really have fallen off in this save. They were actually relegated only last year, finishing 23rd. They've really struggled in this league too. Uh, so to get a 2-0 win against them at home was a really good result. And then in the last most recent game, we stomped Shrewsbury Town into the ground. 6-0, Jerome Sinclair with a hat-trick, Samuel with two, Rolando Aarons grabbing another, and it was a great, great performance. So, as you can kind of tell by that kind of summary, we've been performing pretty well. In the six league games, we played four wins, not drawing any, which is, of course, a very, very nice. If we look at the league table, you can see right now we are in second. We are two points behind Sheffield United, and we're ahead of Peterborough, who, of course, we lost to uh, on goal difference, which is very good and obviously a massive benefit, I guess, of uh, wins like we've had against Shrewsbury. Looking at our goal difference, plus 22 is really, really impressive. Uh, looking at player stats, you can see here Jerome Sinclair, Claire just been a massive player for us. Uh, joint top goal scorer in the league. Of course, he joined us from Liverpool this summer, and I thought he'd be a big player, and we decided to switch our system to facilitate for a second striker to play alongside Samuel. And you can see here, 10 goals in 10 games. Absolutely ridiculous statistics. Uh, he's been great. Uh, elsewhere on the pitch, we've been very good too. You can see here, looking at the average ratings, Rolando Aarons has performed really well at left mid, on loan, of course, from Newcastle. Uh, Gnor, who's on loan from Mario Affiliate, Nottingham Forest has done well. And uh, Alex Samuel as well has been huge for us. And as you can see, he's got eight goals in nine games. So between our two strikers, they've got 18 goals in 19 games. They've been superb. Anyway, uh, there's a few other little bits and bobs to tell you guys about. Firstly, Adam Armstrong's on the assist charts, but you guys kind of already knew that from last episode because he hasn't added too many to his tally since last year. But we did make a few more loan signings, just a few to add a little bit more strength to the squad. Uh, you can see it looking at them. The first one was Sean Cummings, who joined us from our, of course, affiliate 
uh, over in Nottingham uh, Forest. Uh, he's a very good right back, very, very good right back. For this level, he's going to be great. You can see here he's a leading player for most Sky Bet League One sides. Not got the great best big matches, and he's not going to improve much, but he'll do a job for us certainly. And he may even be a championship quality striker, or not striker, right back if we want to take him on. But we've got him in on loan. We're not paying his wages, and that works in our favour. The other player we have is uh, Olivier Nitschem, um, who is a French under-21 international who we've got on loan from Manchester City. Another player who we're not paying anything towards his wages. He's here for the next three months. Um, I guess as is Cummings as well. I didn't really mention that. But this guy's a great little right midfielder. Good centre mid too. Um, just add some real quality to our midfield. You can see looking at his report, decent champion, uh, sorry, decent Premier League player. Uh, consistent as well. Uh, we're probably going to primarily play him out on the right-hand side, but because of how versatile he is, he's going to be able to play a number of positions. You can see last year for Swansea, he got five goals and six assists in the Premier League. Not sure why no one else has taken a punt on him and taken him on loan since, but you can see everywhere he's performed, he's performed well. And um, He has played in League One a good few years ago now, and it'll be interesting to see if he can maintain the precedent that I guess he's set on his previous loan spells, but a very, very good loan signing to get, and one that I'd perhaps like to extend till the end of the year if possible. So anyway, looking at the stats as a whole and the players as a whole, you can see we've been performing really well over the last five games. Players have just been performing off the charts. We are without Lewis Thompson for today's game, which is a little bit of a miss because he's a very, very good player for us. But we have some more than adequate replacements, you know, waiting in the wings, I guess, to come and bring on. All in all, though, the squad's looking very, very good. I'm incredibly happy with the balance of the side. Um, I kind of feel like our squad size is perhaps a little bit bloated, but when you look at the players whose contracts are expiring at the end of this year, we're going to be losing a lot of players right now. Uh, a few of these are being offered extensions as we speak, and I hope to extend them, but a lot of the players here are players who perhaps are past it um, in terms of they're not going to make it for us even if we stay in League One this year. The way we're going, you know, Championship has got to be the aim, really, to get promoted has got to be the aim, because we are seven points in the playoffs after 11 games which is pretty impressive obviously Sheffield United and Peterborough and Oxford are going to stand in our way and MK Dons aren't that far away but we've had a fantastic start to the year and I think we've added a little bit more quality in the last few kind of you know weeks in terms of signing the two loanees that we've got in for two positions that debatably were a little bit kind of lacking in and um yeah as I said all in all I'm very very optimistic about our chances this year so anyway, let's get into today's game. As I mentioned, it is in the Johnson's Paint Trophy. Next episode, we will have the Capital One Cup fourth round against Norwich City of the Premier League. They've actually been quite a stable Premier League team, Norwich, on this save. So that's not going to be easy. But let's focus on the here and now. Let's take on Wickham and let's show them what we're made of. Because I'm a genius, however, I've not gone to the day of the match day before recording. So you guys get to witness the loading times with me. But yeah, this Wickham game should be interesting. Wickham are a League 2 side. We didn't perform very well at all in the Johnson's Pay Trophy last year. We kind of rolled over on our backs and just let... Uh, I'm trying to think who it was now. It was a League 1 team. I think it might have been Swindon walk all over us. Wickham, a team who were uh, in the Skrill or rather the Vanarama conference at the same time as us. And they went up first and we finished second. Obviously, a lot has changed in the last year and a half since we were in the same division as them. So this might be a chance for us to get a little bit of revenge for the fact they made us do it the hard way through the playoffs. But also just a good kind of chance to perhaps get some silverware uh, in the Johnson's Paint Trophy. So we have got a few players struggling with fitness. So I'm just going to make some quick amendments, I think, just because... Yeah, we don't, we don't want to be playing with a weakened squad if possible. We'll give um, Hayden a run out. Hayden has complained about lack of first-team football. Of course, he joined us in the uh, Vanarama conference, so he's kind of tailed off and is no longer of real kind of massive significance, I guess, to us. But we're going to play a fairly full-strength team here. We have two subs outside of the match squad. Let's, let's just fix that real quick. And we are golden. So, yeah, uh, this should be a good game. As you can see, we are the favourites to win. We should have enough quality. We'll see how we get on. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm very happy with how this season started. Obviously, going into this year, first year in League One, off the back of four back-to-back -back promotions. And if you've watched the FC United of Manchester save uh, that I did for FM13, you'll know this was kind of the point where I started to struggle a bit in terms of... Um, 
I think League One may have been the only division where we didn't get straight promoted, like back to back. Like every other league we shot through, except League One, and that was kind of a big learning curve for me in terms of lower league management and how to go about perhaps building a side. Obviously, we've got a great goal here to start things off, but um, this year, doing this save, I've been looking a lot more towards free agents and then selling on players who perhaps we bring in who we can get money for, for that money, and then really using that finance to boost us, which... I can understand why some people might not enjoy that element at this stage because with FC United I was very loyal towards my regens and staying within budgets but this year I kind of feel like we've got something pretty cool going on in terms of the way that I'm bringing in some Premier League youngsters who have been released giving them a chance and then you know letting them really kind of thrive I guess in a in a not a weaker team but in a, a team that kind of matches their own level and I think it's going to be particularly interesting in the next few years where perhaps we start to make our way towards you know championship Premier League level. And it'll be interesting to see if any of those players can make that step with us, the step that their former clubs didn't think they could make. But anyway, uh, Alex Samuel has grabbed another goal there. Of course, a player who's been here since League 2 and is still performing well. He's still not been recalled to the F Wales yeah, Wales squad. He, he got a hat-trick, of course, against Luxembourg at the start of last season. Um, and never got called up again, which seems a little bit harsh. But he's got another goal here to add to his goal-scoring tally. Um, this could be a little bit of a demolition job against Wickham. We'll have to see how things go. But I kind of felt like this year the Johnson's Paint Trophy is a trophy that I've got to want to win if I can. And some guy with an absolutely mad name, I'm just going to call him Max, has scored a free kick for Wickham. And suddenly 2-1 isn't that comfortable. But as I was saying, you know, the, the Johnson's Pate Trophy is definitely a trophy I think we can win. Um, whether or not if it really got to crunch time and we were doing well in League One and we had a huge game and we had the Johnson's Paint Trophy, whether or not I might rest a few legs from the Johnson's Paint Trophy, like I probably would have to because I do obviously value the league with infinite more significance than the Johnson's Paint Trophy. But at the same time, we've not had too many incredible domestic successes. We've always done well in the leagues. But um, you look through, obviously we, we had that one good run in the FA Cup a few years ago now where we reached the third round. Um, obviously this year I guess we've reached the League Cup fourth round which is pretty impressive and we're going to be taking on Norwich next episode. But this is perhaps our real chance to get some silverware early on in this save. If we don't get silverware in this t tournament and we were to get promoted of course we wouldn't be able to play in the Johnson's Paint Trophy. And then it perhaps gets a little bit more difficult to add a little bit of silverware to the cupboard. But anyway, let's, let's focus on the here and now. Nitchum should have scored. Should have scored. Howell in goal for them. Grasps the ball gratefully there. It was a nice, easy effort for him to deal with, really. But looking at the stats, we are in complete control, which is very, very pleasing to be able to say, of course, Wickham's only goal coming from that free kick. But at 2-1, it's still not comfortable. So I'm just going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I'm far from pleased. I believe there's a lot to come from you, but you just weren't good enough in this first half. You know, 2-1 up against a team in the league below us. This game should be dead. It should be dead. We've had three clerk chances. We've not taken them all. And now Boswick Jackson is just murdering people. And he gets himself the yellow card. A player who has had a somewhat dubious, I guess, discipline record in terms of he has... Um, been to, sent off you know I think last year at least twice and this year at least once already so we've got to keep an eye on that and I might even take him off if we get a goal or two more and start to pull away but looking at it we can actually having the better of this second half they had that free kick there obviously which I'm not going to lie I was a little bit worried about having seen them already score one but you can see here they're making some tactical changes already we can perhaps going to go a little bit more attacking um, I'm pretty sure the format for this cup is that if it's a draw, it goes to a second leg. Um, but we will see at the moment. Of course, we are in the lead. We should really retain this league if we can. Samuel Sinclair hits the crossbar, tries to get the rebound. Can someone score? No, they can't. That would have been a great goal there because Sinclair really had to extend himself to beat the defender to the ball. But unfortunately, the woodwork did deny him there. And... Do we have another chance here? Samuel! Yes, we do have another chance. That is Alex Samuel with his 13th goal of the season. The player who joined us last year and was a massive signing for us last year. Performed superbly. And this year he's been joined by a little strike partner in um, Stewart. They formed their own little lower league SAS. And um, they're working fantastically as a pair as you guys saw there. 
I'm a poet and I didn't know it. And we've almost conceded a goal from that 50 yards. They've got the rebound. That That's poor. That is poor. Well, it came from an incredible shot here by Anderson, I think it was. He just ploughed it and it hits the crossbar. And our defence has the urgency to get onto the ball there of a sloth on fire. No regard for self-preservation. They didn't want to keep Swindon to one goal. Or not Swindon, Wickham to one goal. And we've conceded. Can, can we make something here though? Boswick Jackson, of course we can. Panic over. Panic over, right? Get, get Boswick Jackson off because he's been booked. Make sure he doesn't take off his shirt now. We don't want to get him sent off before we have a chance to sub him off. But 4-2... Obviously, they keep pegging us back, but we're performing by far and away better than they are, and we're making it count. The fans are in their raptures. Even though there was even a guy by the Burger Van doing a little dance. There wasn't actually that should be something in next year, shouldn't it? But anyway, looking at it, we're performing really, really well. They've got another set piece though. These set pieces, man. These set pieces, man. For free, they're killing us. They are killing us from set pieces. Maybe a new team trading focus to defend set pieces because they flipped in the ball there and then, well, he just takes a touch and the keeper's in no man's land. The defence don't care. And, um, well, we can make it 4-3 and then now we're back down to one goal. Are we going to pull away again? It's kind of been the trend of this game is we pull two goals ahead, they peg us back. Knorr, Cummings, Nitchum. Sinclair, that was a chance. That was a chance. It's not often you get a, an effort from within 10 yards of goal with that much space around you. And he just blasted it at the keeper, which is an uncharacteristic finish by him. Because he has been a very good player for us this year. Looking at it, we've got a chance here. Have we? Samuel Sinclair buries it. Of course he does. He redeems himself with an even more difficult finish. I think the keeper parried it onto the woodwork, but just a nice set piece. Samuel to Stewart, the SAS, too strong. Keeper goes for it with his legs. That's some schoolboy defending right there, but I'm not going to complain. Two goals ahead. If we can make it three, thank you very much. If we don't, that doesn't matter too much. Just, just hold on to what we have now. If we can not concede another goal, that won't make up for what we've done defensively. But it might make me slightly less... Not concerned. I'm not concerned at this point, but apprehensive, I guess. If we're conceding three against Wickham in the league below, you know, that's something we've got to look at and maybe tighten up, particularly the set pieces. We've got a chance here. Hayden, Gnor, Nitchum, Samuel. Samuel with the finish. Thank you very much. That's game, set and match. 6-3. There's his hat-trick. It's our second in four minutes. It's a nicely worked goal, if we're on it. It's just some patient play. Nitchin with the play, and then Samuel just lets it roll get, lets it roll around the defender, hits it on his left peg, sweet as you like, straight into the top corner. And that should be all she wrote there, ladies and gentlemen. Might be a chance for another set-piece goal if Wickham want it, but they do miss the chance. And all in all, a pretty darn good performance. As What was that? That's the worst goal kick I've ever seen. Literally all the worst goal kick. I, I could have come onto the pitch and taken a better goal kick than that. If you missed that, please feel free to rewind this video and go and look at that. It's probably worth it for the spectacle. I've never seen that happen. But we've won 6-3. We're exceptional in the second half. We've got the goals that matter. And I'm very happy, boys. We, st we stepped it up in the second half. Um, and, and we got the, the well-deserved win, I guess. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap things up for today. As I said, next episode will probably be a little bit of a shorter one because it will be against Norwich in three games' time. But hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. In the meantime, we've got a few games, no massive ones, and then a little bit down the line, potentially, we've got the Sheffield United game. But anyway, I'll join you guys for the Norwich game. That should be a big one. Premier League opposition. Can we cause yet another Capital One Cup upset? You guys will have to tune in to find out. If you have enjoyed this video... Smash the like button, I do appreciate it. Leave any comments you've got down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.